Okay. Yeah, we should be at the beginning. Educators in VR created a K twelve. Oh yeah. Okay. You got it. Okay. All right. And we are live. All right. So everybody, please give a warm welcome to Ken Alter, who's going to who's joining us. Where where are you based at the moment, Ken? I'm currently in Ireland. Oh, fantastic. Oh. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. And how are you enjoying the conference so far, my friend? It's great. It's great. You know, I haven't attended too many sessions yet, but I plan to yeah. join a few um, today. So, so far, so Lovely. good. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for joining us. And you're going to be telling us today a little bit about creating a K through 12 school in VR. But just before you do that, um, for everybody, um, is it, what's the name of your, or your app? It's called Cosmos School. That's right, Cosmos School, and it's available. So he'll be telling you all about that. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to hand over now. Please, um, can we? I'm going to toggle mute all. Mute all is on. So um, if you have any questions, please make a note, and then we'll come to the questions afterwards. All right? Over to you, Cam. Please. No well, thanks. All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, this is. Um, Actually, my second presentation on this topic with the educators in VR community. Um, I mean, the first one in this in the summit, but I've done one before at the meetup. So, um, of course, to, I remember you know, now. Yes. Happy to be back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, so, so, yeah, some stuff has changed since then. So, um, <laughs> cool. So, um, you know, um, our topic is is creating a K through 12 school in in VR, and um, as you'll see in this in this talk, I'll be talking about about you know about this this big idea um which i think is you know super interesting and um i'm sure many of you have thought about this before also it's it's not it's not too far fetched um but you know before that i just want to quickly introduce myself and um, my company and um yeah so next next slide please all right so um my name is um jo john it's spelled c-a-n so it's not it's not pronounced Can, it's pronounced John. It's a Turkish name originally. So, um, um, you know, like the English John. Um, on the picture here, you see um, on the right myself, and on the left is um, Dorina. Is my, she's my co founder and my, my partner. She's also here somewhere in the room, I think. Um, I think probably over there. No, that's Simon. <laughs> Hello there. Um, and um, you know we um, we founded we founded Cosmos School together um, a couple of years ago, and um, we tried tried different things um, basically on this on this quest to create um, like you know how can we improve K twelve education through VR, um, you know, and and the big idea is you know creating this this VR school. Um, what we're doing right now is we're creating um, educational games so. <laughs> Um, I will tell you more about this in a in a few minutes, um, and you might you know ask yourself what does an educational game have to do with a VR school? But I hope to um, tie these ends together as we go along. Um, so next slide, please. Cool. So you know this big idea. Um, okay. Um, let's say we could have like a a school for you know for kids K through 12 that exists solely in VR. So there are no physical buildings um, and like, like kind of like like this conference you know, where people just meet in VR with the teacher and learn. Um, I guess you know kind of like if if you could make that work, it would be pretty cool because you could um, um, like lower the costs of education um, considerably. I think um, you could increase access to education um, for people who um, you know happen to live in a, in a location that's not near a good school or a good school district even you know that's even true for like developed countries like the US where a lot of people just live don't live near a, you know a major city where there's a good school system um, and um, and of course it's even more true for developing countries um, and you know I guess this idea has been kind of like explored a little bit Already, with 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 kind of like the invent of the internet and online education is a thing. Um, it's already a thing without VR. But I think what, what makes what makes it special um, for VR is that um, 
the same reason that we can ho start holding conferences in VR like this is the social presence. So basically, you know, um, I think this key kind of like advantage of VR over other technologies is that you um, feel in the same room as someone else. And I think for us humans, as all animals, um, the social the social part is super important. Um, so, you know, we're like, okay, let's create a school in VR. We kind of like had this idea two years ago. We said, okay, let's do it. And and so in the in this talk, I want to a little bit tell you about about our journey that we had in the past two years. Um, as I said, we tried different things, and <laughs> none of it has worked great so far. So <laughs> I, I, I know um, maybe it's also an interesting learning. And then um, I will tell you a bit more about how we think about this topic based on all the experiences we have we had in the in the past two years, and 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 you know going going forward into the future. So um, we can go to the next slide. All right, so basically we've tried, uh, tried three things. Um, the third one we are currently trying. So that's, you know, that's not, not, not sure yet if, if it's going to work. But the first thing we tried, um, we started in, in the summer of 2018, so one and a half years ago, basically. Um, we said, okay, you know, um, Let's um, do live classes in VR. And the idea was to do, or what we were doing were um, physics classes for um, kind of like teenagers, um, like extracurricular physics classes. Um, one of the topics was, you know, how to build a rocket so you could learn about different materials, about the different um, physical science involved uh, behind it, and also about engineering. Um, and so what we did is we built this it was called Cosmos School. We built um, this app where, or the Oculus Go, where um, we had this kind of like this world. Uh, it's like a multiplayer world where, um, you know, students could could book a class. So we had hired a teacher, a physics teacher based in LA, and she kind of like held this class, and it's like an eight-hour class. Um, I mean, um, over the course of two weeks. So every other day, you had like an hour of class. And in between, there were like homework or assignments or presentations that you would prepare for, you know, for the next class. Um, and you know, we held I think around three classes, different classes, and um, we charged a hundred dollars per class per student, and um, it worked. We had a couple of students, um, but you know, what really didn't work is why we decided to to stop doing this is because it was really hard for us to. Um, really acquire students like um first of all you know you had to find students who ha already had a vr headset i mean we were also offering to send them a oculus go for free to loan it to them but you know that's still an additional barrier and another barrier is also you know the extracurricular market in general it turns out is a very hard market because students are already full you know they've got like their school they've got homework from their real school They've got maybe sports that they do, and then maybe they play musical instruments, so they're all basically already booked after after school. So trying to convince a parent or a kid to say, hey, take this additional class after school, it's it's really it's a really hard exercise in itself, <laughs> even without the added area of VR. So we're kind of like shooting ourselves in both in both feet, you know, at the same time, so basically. Um, therefore our <laughs> It's like from a business perspective, it's really hard to get this going, and we didn't have enough money, and kind of like didn't see like a, a light at the end of the tunnel to, to see it through. From a um, kind of like an ed educational perspective, it was really interesting because um, you know we we really felt that um, these type of classes work. Um, it really is significantly better than doing the same thing in via, uh, over like let's say a Skype call or something where you you don't feel the social presence um but yeah so you know eventually we said okay let's let's stop doing this um and um let's go to the next thing which are um is our science simulations app um i can i can have a video so on the next slide please exactly can, can we play this video or no is the next slide 
So um, what's that? You have to <laughs> set the, just um, about the videos. Uh, they need to be set to autoplay. Oh, okay. Good. Um, so so no I'm not chill. sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, but you know, if you follow us on Twitter, um, you can find this video on Twitter also. I will, the Twitter is on the last page, you'll see. Um, but basically what, what our science simulations have is um, our different science simulations for physics topics um, that teachers can use in the classroom. So th this video would have been about, you can see it a little bit there on the, on the, on the screenshot, um, uh, on the preview image of the videos, like uh, those two conductors and what you can do is you can hook them up to a, um, um, a power source and then um, it will show like the electromagnetic lines around the, around the conductor. So it's basically, it's a good way to visualize um, electromagnetics, you know, and um, so, so basically we built this and we built another one about conservation of energy where you could build a roller coaster and like it would after, after you would run it, you would, you would graph, you know, the different forces and, and speed and, and acceleration. So it's, it's basically like a kind of like a mini lab that with different topics included that the teacher could use inside the classroom. And it was built for the Oculus Go and you can still download it on SideQuest, it's for free. I mean, we stopped developing it, but there are three cool simulations that think that still work and we'll leave it up there. Um, so in this case, we had, you know, we have a couple of thousand downloads and I guess each month um, around two or 300 people open up the app and use it a little bit. Um, the, the thing here again is what, why we decided to stop this after a couple of months is, you know, that teachers, so it's really hard to convince teachers to um, kind of like pay for content. Um, this is uh, VR or not, you know, um, and, and making it VR again adds an additional barrier and makes it harder to kind of like, okay, now you've got to find teachers who have an Oculus Quest or a VR headset um, they like using it in the classroom and then you got to convince them to pay for your content. Um, so it's, 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 it's a really hard exercise and, um, you know, we came with this, we came up with this idea because of our previous live class where our teacher said, Hey, I, I think the, the tools are really cool that I can use during the live classes to show the simulations. So we said, okay, you know, let's spin them out and make it into a known app. But, you know, she, um, she, 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 even she didn't really use it in the classroom and wasn't ready to pay for it. So I guess one of the learnings also a little bit when people just say stuff and then um, it doesn't really matter until they do it. You know, like if you say, hey, you want to have like, you like this, if you ask someone, do you like this app or would you use this app? Most people will say, yes, of course. But then, but then if it comes to actual using and paying part, people, you know, will probably not, not do it. And, and in the end, the action is what counts. So that's maybe another learning that we had. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what people say, it matters what they do. Um, yeah, so, and, and then we said, you know, it's really hard, we gotta, you know, like, what can we do next? And um, the next idea we had is, is on the next slide, um, which um, you, you can switch to. <laughs> yeah, thanks. It's called um, Blurks. And um, I hope IKEA doesn't sue us. <laughs> but um, um, I mean, the, the idea is it's an educational VR game. So we decided to, to switch over to making games. Um, I mean, I think the main reason is that um, we love games. <laughs> um, we love play playing them ourselves. Um, and then, you know, if you look at, the, look at it from a business perspective, games are um, probably the best way to make money in VR right now by just selling the game. And um, I will talk to this about this later on. I think, um, um, you know, games kind of have an important role in kind of influencing kids, um, you know, sparking interest in a, in, a, in, a, in a topic. So at least, you know, in my experience, that's, that's I used to play a lot of games as a teenager and um, I, People were saying, you know, oh, games are bad for you, and so on and so forth. But you know, I discovered my passion, my passions in, in gaming. So um, I think this is it's even no, that was 15 years ago. Now even more true today than than uh, you know 15 years ago, where not a lot of people were gaming. Uh, so Blux is a 
um, and, and what it is is, um, again, you can go on our Twitter to see the video. This is like an early prototype, um, but it's a um, kind of like an engineering puzzle game. So basically, what you have to do is you have to build electrical circuits with these floats. You see, like um, a battery, and over there, you know, over there is a battery, and there are two yellow ones are lamps. Basically, um, uh, build, build electric circuits, and then you can measure like the, the ampere and the volts. And, and the idea is that you need to solve challenges, um, kind of like you know, like like puzzles, um, uh, which get increasingly harder um, to solve, and um, have different components. You know, like maybe there's like a time limit, maybe there's like a number of blocks limited you can have. But um, like if you have played maybe Gadgeteer, you know, uh, then um, with the domino, with the domino stones, maybe the Gadgeteer game, maybe like a similar vibe where you just have to do stuff and, and then solve the challenges. But it's like, I think really satisfying to do. And the education aspect, I think, the education and engineering aspect in our case is super important because um, you know, how the circuits are calculated, um, how the volts and, and amperes are calculated is based on real kind of like physics. It's not uh, some random stuff. So, um, and you know, with the building and the measuring, you really get into the engineering vibes, which um, we hope, hope might spark interest for some kids to, to go down this road. Yeah, um, next slide, please. Okay, so um, you know why? So w one might say, yeah, well, well, you guys started off with this big idea of, of building a K through 12 school in VR, and now you're just playing games. You know what happened? Um, so I think you know I, a little bit explain what happened. Um, learned a lot in the past two years about this in, in this journey, and and. Um, but like it came, came really to the conclusion that um, maybe it's important to look at this virtual school idea um, in, in a more fuzzy or in a more broader way. So, you know, first of all, who says that in education in the future will be the same way? I, I mean, who says that we will just copy paste classrooms into a virtual classroom? Um, maybe it doesn't make sense. Maybe you need to rethink, you know, in, in this process of how education is, is done best. Um, I, I don't have a definite answer for this. Um, I, I don't think anyone has, but I mean, there are some interesting ideas. Um, and, you know, I, I think we came to the conclusion that gaming is, is a good, kind of like a good, good thing to, to um, spark this first interest um, for topics um, that, uh, you know, if you're a kid. Um, so, if we make great educational games, maybe we can have have this impact there, you know. Um, and, and um, you know, I, I think gaming is is gaining importance in education, and and the reason is um, that um, you know that today with the internet, basically, that we have all information, um, a lot of information for free. So um, this is not, like this is the real difference between education today and education 20 years ago. Um, and so maybe what has become more important than ever is, um, do you have the motivation? How do you have the motivation to learn something? Like if you have the motivation to learn something, you can learn it, uh, almost all topics, you can learn it. You just need time and motivation, right? Um, so, um, and, and then the question is, okay, how do you get the motivation? And I think the motivation you get by um, by interest, by this first spark of interest. Um, and then the question is, where does this spark of interest come from? And can you go to the next slide, please? Exactly. So you know, I think interest leads to motivation, leads to to learning. This has always been true. And I mean, I'm not an I'm not an education researcher, uh, so but so maybe that's obvious to, to some. Of, of the people in, in the audience, but like this, like I think an insight that a statement that is getting increasingly true with the av availability of free, kind of like ubiquitous information all over the internet. Um, so 
and therefore I think gaming is getting an increasingly important role in education because a lot of kids like to play games um, I mean also adults <laughs> um, but like you know like if you think back for me age 10 to 20 gaming was the most important thing in my life was, was gaming it was more important than, than anything um, and if you look at the kids today I think it seems to be things to, to hold true um, so if you can spark an interest there in something that kids love doing already you know you don't need to force them to do something they don't like you take something that they love doing which is gaming and you make co compelling educational games that, that don't need to be accurate or boring they just they need to spark an interest right so, so i think a great example of this is um Kepler, um space program you know where um it's an older game but like um where you if you don't know it's like a rocket game you build rockets to you, there's like a sandbox mode where you can build rockets and just fly them around um, and there's also like a mission mode where you have to do, uh, reach the missions and you know i don't want to know how many yeah, i bet uh, like a significant percentage of space engineers today became a space engineer because they take this game <laughs> um, i'm pretty sure so you know it's getting more important so um therefore i think what we're doing with with blocks now is also important and it's not too far-fetched away from this idea of um, how can a virtual school look like in the future um, we're just doing the first step now um, we're trying to spark that interest uh, yeah um, you know just um can you go on the next slide please good, good so as a closing thought you know i think um everything um i mean i'm preaching to the choir here but everything that's not physically tied to a specific point will go into vr in the future so i mean remote work education um you know like kind of like these types of conferences obviously in meetings um uh, shopping and whatnot and and you know in schools obviously they also go into vr but you know until we get there i think we need some improvements um like i think on the on the kind of like on the hardware side i think it will be important to increase like i think the most important part will be to increase ergonomics of headsets um so you can hang in there for a couple of hours without getting busy or like sweaty you know i think like i personally don't have this problem but a lot of people have like Marina, for example my co-founder she gets dizzy quickly in vr um second thing is software we need to build great software where this is possible but like in theory you could like create a school and just use outspace vr as a classroom you know why not and and, and the third thing i think is the hardest and will take the longest is a cultural and social acceptance you know like um, if you talk to a lot of parents today, like, oh no, I don't want to, like, VR is bad, you know, kids should go outside and play, which is true. Um, you know, people should go outside and into nature and play and interact with their local communities. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you can't also educate yourself in VR for a couple of hours a day, right? It's not mutually exclusive. But, like, this understanding we need, um, kind of like to, as a culture, and it will come, like, it's inevitable, right? Just needs a couple of years, maybe a decade or something. I say, yeah. So um, with that, you know, I'm happy to take any questions you might have. Um, All right, can we get some love in the room for Ken also, please? Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. And yes, of course, Ken. I remember just after I asked you the question, the name of your app. I knew it very well. You were one of the very first people to speak with us. I think that was around <laughs> about this time last year, wasn't it? And we had, yeah, um, that's right, we had, I think, three or four people explaining this. And um, so your app is also available via the SideQuest uh, platform, is that right? Yeah? Yeah, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. And so, I mean, a lot of people are talking about doing education in VR, but you're actually going about building a whole school, which I think is just amazing. Um, and um, just, just share with us, what's, what's like one of your favorite moments from from your work with the school you're building, you got a you got a story that sticks in your mind. Yeah, um, so I think you know um, what really struck me is um, when we were doing the live classes like a year ago, 
where yeah. um, we had this student from um, Ivana from Colombia actually, and she was like a I think a thirteen year old girl um, who wanted yeah. to she, she she wants to become the, the first Latina woman woman in uh, in space. Basically, she wow. wants to become an astronaut, and wow. she, she's, she's doing everything she can to kind of like learn about space and physics and you know engineering. Lovely. Wow. Um, and she signed up for our first class actually, and and um, having her in there and kind of like, uh, you know, she was playing around with our kind of like uh, with this small simulator that simulated a rocket. Uh, right. You know, rockets have different stages, and it was kind of like yeah. explain why there's a stage one and stage two, and how from a physics standpoint this makes a difference. Uh, and you know, like she had like an kind of like an aha moment there. Um, yeah, which you could see Wonderful. literally ha she having her the aha moment, which is pretty cool. That is very cool. And what strikes me about that, it's interesting because wanting to become an astronaut, obviously you have to learn about rockets. But you also are going to have to probably use virtual and augmented reality in space. I mean, it's going to become part of the training, right? So she's learning two in one. She's learning the technology <laughs> and she's learning the content. That's really cool, yeah. amazing. And so, what's next for Cosmos School Scan? What's what's your next um, big yeah. stage of development? Rolling out, scaling up. What's what's on the cards? parts? Yeah. So um, so you know, as I said. Um, we're um, now building uh, BURPS, which is the educational kind of like engineering yeah. puzzle game. Yeah. Um, and our, our kind of like goal for kind of like the summer is to get it into the Quest store, the Open Quest store. So it's yeah, available wonderful. for everyone to download. I think that yeah. will be a big milestone to reach for us this year. Wonderful. Yeah. Ah, there you go. We got, we got it up on the slideshow. Fantastic. And how, how's your experience yeah. of getting content onto the Quest store? Yeah, uh, it's quite a hard, high bar to pass, isn't it, with Arcos? Did you hear me there? No, oh, so, no, sorry, I think you were breaking up. Okay, yeah. don't worry. Okay, um, well, let's let's see if anybody's got any questions. So, if you've got any questions, you should be able to see the raise hand um, function at the bottom right. So, is there anyone who would like to ask Han a question about his work that he's doing? If not, I'm very happy to ask you a few more questions because I think it's fascinating what you're doing, right? We'll let people have a think about that. So, Ken, um, I mean, what subjects would you love? Like, if in a perfect world, what what would you what would you teach in VR? Um, is there any one specific thing more than other things? Um, I mean, that's a good question. Is it I like think. Physics yeah, more like, than than languages, or you know. Yeah, like for me personally, I'm just more interested in science and engineering topics. So yeah. I would teach them, but in general, I think, um, um, like you know, like if you if you had like a full school in VR, then you you it would be important to teach the, the, all all the topics, all the or like yeah. all the topics students are interested in, at least. Right, and if and, and if somebody yeah. with really good ideas who like your work approached you, would you consider maybe, were, and they were a specialist in a field that you're not a specialist in, is that something you would consider like working with or you know, talking to? Yeah, sure. You know, no we, <laughs> because in our community here, we have people doing all kinds of amazing things and um, yeah. they might, you know, they might have the skills where you have the platform I wonder whether that might lead to something that could be good for both of you. That's a thought. Yeah, always like, you know, always open to talk to people and see if there's something. Wonderful. We so we do have a question here. I'm going to take this question here. We have a question from Robert. I'm just switching your microphone on. Robert, you should have your microphone. Give us some emojis. Robert, where are you? Yep, I'm over here. Uh, okay, you want to switch your microphone nice and loud as well? On the bubble, oh, yeah. maximum Sorry. volume, bottom left. Yeah, it's all right. It's me. Oh, I right. had it uh, moved to my side. Um, Lovely, okay, yeah. Robert. How are you doing? You've pretty much. Hi, I'm not so bad. Um, <laughs> I've literally been pipped by your question there um, to uh, Jean <laughs> because um, I actually, in Somnium Space, run a huge London museum, three individual building wings. Um, and wow. I've plastered posters in there and audio tours and things like that. Um, because before I was a carer for my wife, I used to be a London tour guide. 
So my mm -hmm. question was going to be, how do people get in touch with you, Jean, and offer their services? Because I'd love to have students come round the museum. I can give them a full tour of London and give them my interests and hopefully incite a bit of history into them um, and love for things that you know used to be uh, over here in the UK. We have a, a saying, when we get married, we carry a lady over a threshold. Um, and uh, that actually comes from historically when people were very poor and uh, they only had mud on their floors and they started to lay down straw cuttings or threshings from farmers' lands to make the floor underfoot a bit softer. And of course that would eventually slide out through the door and eventually they had to put a piece of wood across the doorway, literally a threshing hold. And that's yeah. how it developed over mm. time. We carry the lady over the threshold. <laughs> so little useless bits of info like that <laughs> dropped into a tour of London, um, I think incites people to find the more interesting side rather than just bury them in days and dates, etc. history. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> that are all love that, love that. So I'd love to get in contact with you um, and privately and then see if I can offer services for anybody coming into our Somnium space uh, launcher and uh, take some tour groups around. To okay. Some tour groups round. That's better. <laughs> okay, John, yeah. are you are you aware of Somnium space? Um, yeah, but I haven't used it yet, to be honest. Because okay. I don't have. Okay, a so we have PCBR the. Uh, um, for those of you who don't know, I'm just going to uh, mention this quickly. Somnium Space is a um, very, very exciting um, social VR platform. It's like one continuous huge space. And if you don't know it, you should definitely, definitely check it out. And uh, just listening to you there, Robert, that, that sounds amazing. I'd love to come and see your museum yourself and maybe oh, learn a little bit see. about you because we're actually thinking about building an educators in VR school in Somnium Space as well as one of the projects Excellent. we're doing. Yeah, yes. and I've known this snake see... bite there. So uh, do come along and see me there. Snake bite. Snake bite. Oh, I see you on the Discord as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you see um, Chan's um, contact details there? Oh, they were up just a minute ago. So you can hit him up on Twitter, I'm sure. And um, yeah. Uh, yep, got see. them. Yep, see them. Right. I've got, okay, uh, so uh, yes. Um, Cosmos. Just the heads up about um, Somnium Space, and that is that. Um, the, uh, let me see, the Rock Out the Summit on Saturday the 22nd is going to take place. This is the grand closing ceremony, but also the launch of the new Somnium uh, world with um, the owner, Arthur Sichov, who's going to be joining us. That's taking place Saturday 22nd, and um, at the moment only available for PC VR, um, but it, I think Arthur said it would be coming to Quest at some point. So you can watch the live stream if you can't get in. Otherwise, please help us. We're trying to get as many people as we possibly can into Somnium Space for the grand closing and launch of Somnium Space at the same time. Uh, we have another question here as well I'm going to take. Um, uh, let me see. Quest link work for Somnium. Um, Quest link, yes, I should say that. Thank you very much, uh, JW. Um, before I forget and dismiss the quest, Anybody has a quest and can do quest link with the cable to a PC VR, you can also access Somnium Space. So please look into that and join us definitely for that. Um, any other questions now? And I've just got to change my battery here and my left controller's come down. One second. <laughs> uh, um, let's have a look. All right, if anybody has any other questions, go ahead and hit that raise hand button and we'll get you on the queue there. Okay, I'm back. So there's no more questions. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take up a bit more of your time if you don't mind, my friend, <laughs> because we don't often get. Um, well, I want as much time as possible with all of our guests, and so um, I just want to go right back. And and maybe you mentioned it before, but I want to. Most people I talk to, they can remember very very clearly the moment that. They switched on to VR, and it's not always the first time. Um, didn't happen for me the first time, but do you remember that that moment, that very, very moment when something about VR in your brain just went click? Oh my word! I need to know about this. Can you tell us about that? 
Um, yeah. Um, so so uh, yeah. interesting because you know when we started Cosmos School, we first were developing a mobile app. So for yeah. like iPhone and Android, we didn't. I, well, I, like, I knew of VR as a concept, but we never really have tried it out, right? Yeah. Um, so and then this is a kind of like a coincidence. We we're living in San Francisco at that time, and um, through our roommate, we we're invited to um, Michael Antonov, one of Oculus, his co-founders, birthday party oh, at wow. his apartment. So, cool. so went to that party, <laughs> and then he had like Lucky a rift you. set up in the corner, you know, and um, yeah. it was like eating, and we're like, wow, you know, let's try this out. And then <laughs> like first game, I think it kind of like made me realize this is like something completely new as the climb was on there. So just like, I was like climbing and like, you know, getting vertigo, like, wow, this is some real shit, you know? Um, yeah. When you feel it, so, right? <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, like the, the whole party would, instead of talking to people, would just like hang at, you know, at the rift and like get like a refill, a refill on our red wine, but like keep playing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then um, this is like my co-founder Dorina was also there. And then next day, you know, we're like, oh, okay, so we need to do something in this in VR in education. And yeah. then a couple of yeah. months later, the Go came out, which for me was kind right. of like the kickstart of the start of the mainstream. Ordered the Go yeah. and then started building right away. Dropped everything we had before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so, interesting yeah. about the Go because if you think the Go is only, I mean, it only came out. What, 20 months ago and and yeah, for many crazy. people it's still the go-to headset and it's amazing and for a lot of other people it's kind of been overtaken obviously by the quest um yeah. the, the rate of development is so fast but you're right when the because i joined vr i think two months before the quest came out uh, the, the oculus go came out and so my first yeah. experience was actually not pc vr it was um the uh a cardboard with my mobile phone and I oh, launched yeah, yeah. Uh, an app called um, uh, Deep Dive, uh, and mm -hmm. I, I loaded an experience which was the virtual a virtual tour of the International Space Station. So I was in my living room, nice. and I put my phone in this cardboard box. I had no idea what this was going to do, and I put it on my head, and I was spellbound. I was completely spellbound. I couldn't believe two things. Two things: one, that my phone was doing this and I didn't know about it. How could my phone be convincing my brain of this? And the second thing was that I felt like I had been up to the International Space Station. And it, it yeah, it, I will never forget that moment. And, and everything that's happened since then is a result of that one moment. All right, we have another question here. <laughs> um, we have another question here from, I think, Serenity. I've just switched your microphone on and Serenity you should be able to ask your question. Yep. Give us some hearts. Where are you, Serenity? Where are you? I'm I'm in the corner modeling. Oh, all right, I'm all right. Serenity, <laughs> lovely. What's I'm your over question? Here. Yes, uh, I know it's not your subject, but I wondered with uh, VR and schools and everything, and uh, I'm a singing teacher, and I wondered if you had any ideas mm -hmm. for how music and music lessons uh, might be incorporated into um, school VR. Yeah, I have. So, I definitely have an um, an idea for that. I'll I'll jump in first, Sean, and then maybe you can add something to it. So, Serenity, yeah. um, you are probably familiar with uh, three sixty cameras and three uh, D cameras, are you? A little. Right. So, at my college, I've just run a project with our music department, and what they do is, they, at the end of the year, or yeah, in year two, they have um, the music students join and form up a band. It's part of an assessment. They have to create a band. They have to practice. Then they have to set up their own studio, and then they have to do uh, a live recording uh, in the studio that they've set up, and it's part of their assessment. It's quite a cool project. And what I did was I put a 360 camera in the middle of it, and I filmed, um, filmed a few minutes of a live performance, and then I played that performance back to the students, and they were able to observe themselves as um as yeah as as the audience which they really liked mm -hmm. and then we did that in 3d as well and they could not believe that they were actually standing next to them next to themselves playing the drums <laughs> or playing the guitar or playing the bass they absolutely loved that so that's a real relatively easy way <coughs> of um using a 360 camera or a 3d camera some of them can actually be live stream so we're using the views xr camera and it can live stream which means you can set it up 
in the room next door, you can live stream to YouTube, then you can put your VR headset on, catch the live stream on your VR headset, and you're watching live what's happening in the next room. So for teachers, mm -hmm. that's an amazing assessment tool. You can live stream across different campuses for your school. The, the, the technology available there, that's one cool, uh, definitely one tool that I would highly recommend. Sean, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, um, um, two things. So, um, like, as you said, like music, like music teaching is not my, my, not my wheelhouse. But, you know, I think um, two things. I think, first of all, um, this is not exactly music teaching, but I think um, kind of like I'm live performing uh, stuff like karaoke or like also just singing, I think in VR will be, I think kind of like, you know, the the social media application of VR with teenagers and kids. I think, you know, mm -hmm. TikTok, if you think TikTok is big, I think it will be TikTok on steroids where <laughs> you can just perform and like um, live and like sing karaoke and, and whatever. Um, and, and then the second thing, which maybe goes more into musical education is, um, um, I think, playing instruments. Like um, when I was a kid, I learned to play the drums, but like I had to come with my parents to kind of like get this expensive drum set and we had to find a place in the house to, to put it and it was loud, you know. Now you can download, I just downloaded this app, Paradiddle. Um, um, Paradiddle is for the Quest and also PC VR, I think where you can just have your virtual drums, you know, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's good enough. Like it's, you know, it's not hundred percent the, the real thing, but it's like 99% the real thing. And um, like, again, to come back to the spark interest um, point, you know, like if you're a kid and you have like a quest and you just pay $10 to download this drums app and you see, do you like it or not? If you like it, you can keep going eventually buy a drum set if you want to or not. Um, you know, like there are videos on YouTube people covering songs um, on Paradiddle with the virtual drums and it's, it sounds pretty damn good, you know? Um, and, and, you know, the same, and then, and then, you know, like we'll see, I think the same thing happening for like the, the piano, uh, maybe other expensive instruments like the violin or like, um, you, you know, like a guitar um, where to a point where you can with your friends together record maybe even um, songs in a virtual stu studio. Um, there's the DJing app, you know, so I think Yes. This is, this is oh, crazy. It, like, yes, actually on that. The lot. DJ um, Tribe XR. Tribe XR yeah. uh, is a DJ app. And this, if you, who knows Tribe XR? Give me some hearts if you know Tribe XR, because I'm super excited about this. Nobody here knows Tribe XR. Oh my God. XR, a DJ <laughs> school app where you can have remote lessons in DJing. So you load your headset on, you're standing in front of a DJ deck, you can control it all, you can put records on, you can mix it up. <laughs> all that but you can have the guy who the, the you can have trainers come in remotely and train you i mean talk about having like becoming a dj you can have the owner of the app come in and teach you from california or wherever and you can do live events so you can practice your set and then you can open it up um, other people can watch it this is absolutely amazing and another app a friend of mine built i call him a friend because he's so cool it's called um exa the infinite instrument. Have a look on Steam for Exa, the instru uh, infinite instrument. It's a beautiful, beautiful, simple app. You go into a space and you're surrounded by like different sets. You have a drum set here, you have keyboard here, you have strings over there, and then you have an infinite amount of um, sounds that you can assign to these instruments. And what you do is you press, uh, you press play or record, and then you go to one instrument. Maybe you start with the drum, so you give it a beat. Boom, tss, boom, boom, tss, boom, boom, tss, boom, boom, and then you're recording that in a loop, and then you stop the loop, you play it back, and now that loop is playing in the space. You got your beats going. Now you record a second thing on top, and so you're laying track over track over track, and you're building a whole song, and um, you do, and you can do that again remotely. So you can have four or five people in there doing this together. You can have a remote distributed band playing live music in VR. It's, if that's not insane, I do not know what is. So check out Tribe XR and EXA, the infinite instrument. All right. Um, it's coming up about time now. We're going to maybe, if there's any more questions, um, uh, I might have one more question done and then we might kind of wrap things up slowly, let the next people find the stage. So, John, my next I'm question. One thing. Yes, please, Tim, okay. over here. Sorry. Yes. I just wanted to mention to Serenity, um, 
actually yeah. the, the, the diversity track um, a little bit later on today has yeah. uh, speak of music therapy in VR for people with ah diseases. there you go Phil um, wonderful Lovridge is going to be doing that and he talks very much about singing live um, across the web in VR and the challenges that wow. come with that um, are you in GMT Serenity yes yes absolutely right well that's that's one o'clock tomorrow morning <laughs> but, Fantastic. But <laughs> yeah, Good luck with that. Oh, here he is. Here's Ben. Here's Ben. Oh, singing in virtual That's reality. Yeah, yeah. All right. Wonderful. <laughs> Yay. Some hearts for Ben here. <laughs> Excellent. How cool. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, we got one more question coming in. Roni. Roni, I'm switching the microphone on. Roni, give us some emojis. Let us know where you are. Uh, what, uh, I want to say what we need, what we doing here. What we're we doing here, we're learning about VR yeah. and how it's used in education. Ah, so okay. So if you uh, sound you like you ask. might still be at school, that's okay. It sounds like you might still be at school, and we are working to make sure that you get VR in school. Okay. <laughs> that's our <laughs> mission, so that your teachers learn how to use it, and you can learn VR in school. All the subjects you want to learn, even do now. I'm not in my VR. school now. I'm in my room. Yeah, I'm sure you, you want. Are, but I, we want uh, to get VR to the uh, school. Yes. We want to get into school, and we want you to be able to join even um, like VR classes from your bedroom. You know, because we ah. teach inside VR, so you could have a lesson. And what are you learning? What do you like to learn, uh, Roni? I What's like your favorite math. subject? Like All math. right, so. All right. Well, Ken Ulster here might be your man. He does physics and engineering. He might have a maths app for you. So in future, you'll be able to um, stay at home but learn maths in VR, and you can like see the maths in front of you rather than having to read it on a page. How does that sound? You like that? That sound sound awesome. <laughs> there you go. You heard it from you heard it from Roni. He wants us. <laughs> Lovely. <Nice. laughs> Excellent. Okay. Um, well, I think we're going to wrap it up slowly there. Mm -hmm. um, Ken, can we get a big round of applause, please, for Ken and Cosmos School and the work he's doing? <laughs> we need more work like yours, Ken. Uh, sorry, Sean, Sean, I keep pronouncing it wrong. Forgive yeah. me, my friend. <laughs> um, and thank you to everybody here in the room as well. Thank you to uh, Tim for hosting, hosting the previous event. Have we got another event following this one, or is it a different track coming up? Is it a different session? Uh, just check it's, quickly. It's, it's a different, uh, different track next. Is a different session. All right. So, yeah. if you want to, uh, will somebody throw a portal to the to the social lounge? We can go there for a little bit. Tim, you able to do that? Shall I do that? Oh, I don't. I don't want to jump out of here yet. Can anybody throw a portal uh, to the social room? Let's have I'm a look. Here. Anybody I'm here? here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. okay. So, then, is that something you're, that's you're able to do? You're able to do? Uh, uh, somebody. Uh, somebody uh, Oh, the v, uh, oh, I see. Oh, um, right, let me see. I'll try and do it. I'll try and do it. Sean, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you much, very much, everybody else. We're going to go to the social lounge to hang out before the, yes, well done, before the next session starts. Have a look, have a chat with um, maybe Sean, are you going to join us there? So I'm going to come down here. Yeah. I'm going to pop this here. I'm going to drop a, uh, see if I can find the um, social. Where's the social? Have a look, presentation, presentation. Let me see if I can find it. Neuroscience, psychological, computer science, VR training, looking. Where are we? I can't see it. Interesting. How about this one? Yeah, you know, talk. What about this one? No, I can't see it. Have a look. No. All right. Well, maybe maybe that's not an option this time. Then in that case, um, go and refresh yourselves, get a drink, get some food, have a rest. Come back and join us for the next event of your choice. Thank you so much, everybody. And um, thank you, Sean. Thank you, Tim. Thank you uh, where Serenity was helping. We had JW helping up here as well. Thank you, everybody who helped. Thank you, everybody who joined. Um, Oh, just before you go, guys, listen, are we having fun here in the uh, in the summit? Is everybody having a good time? I mean, I know we've got some glitches here, but come on, all together, we're rocking it, aren't we? Guys, 
this is actually happening. This is this is history. You know, glitches and all, warts and all. This is this is pretty amazing. Still, thank you so much for your patience as we try and do this. Oh, um, Ben Lovage is yes. The link to the social area is the back of the wonderful. So, Wonderful. Yeah, if you line. walk out through the lobby, or if you yeah, walk out line. behind the stage, so you can jump way. into the oh, social oh, area there. Oh, Wonderful. Come in this way. Okay, so All right, Robert. Back there you go. Doors. Wonderful. Well done. Go refresh. Go, go chill out, hang out. Let your headsets cool down, and we'll see you in the next event, guys. All right? All right. <laughs> see you later. Thanks, Daniel. Very good.